Well, good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer for Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin from Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. And today we're going to be looking at what Jesus calls the unforgivable sin. Uh, a passage that has been historically more difficult to read and to comprehend and understand. I'm hoping to make it very clear for you and also to give you great comfort in knowing that those of us who have been called to faith in Christ, trusting in him alone as our Lord and Savior, we have nothing to worry about regarding that sin. Well, let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. First, these wonderful words about the, the creation and reminding us who made everything uh, coming from Psalm uh, 104, beginning at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Cover yourself with light as with a garment. <clears throat> kind of reminds us of the transfiguration, which we observed just a few weeks back, how Jesus covered himself with light as a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his messenger winds. His ministers a flaming fire. He sets the earth on its foundations so that it should never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. So here we see also the, uh, the writer of the psalm acknowledging the, the factual nature, the historicity of the flood. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they might not pass, so that they might never, so, so, so that they might not again cover the earth. And so we hear now, as Jesus speaks to the twelve apostles, in Mark chapter three, beginning at verse twenty. <clears throat> then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, he is out of his mind. <laughs> and the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he casts out the demons. They didn't like the fact that Jesus was performing miracles, so they looked for a different way to explain how he was doing them. And Jesus called them to him, and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, then indeed he may plunder his house. This is Jesus talking about entering into the house of Satan, which is this world, right? The Satan being the prince of the world, and Jesus is the one entering the house and binding up Satan as he chooses by his own power, and then plundering the house, that is, bringing the kingdom to earth by bringing these miraculous signs of healing and grace and casting out the demons that Satan has placed there. Now here's the part we'll talk about a little bit more. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemies they, blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. So, does that make you a little concerned, a little afraid? Like, is there a way that I could commit this unforgivable, unforgivable sin, this sin that Jesus calls eternal? Well, this is a famously difficult passage, as the Lutheran Study Bible calls it, and it, it, equates the, it equates what Jesus says, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, with the unpardonable sin, unyielding refusal to believe the gospel and a rejection of the Holy Spirit's work to create faith and trust 
in Jesus Christ. That is the eternal sin. That's, and I want to be absolutely clear about that. It's when someone intentionally, purposefully rejects the work of the Holy Spirit in seeking to create and sustain faith in someone. And it makes sense when you think about it. If someone intentionally rejects God, rejects the gospel and the gifts that God freely offers through the gospel, then how can those gifts enter in? The primary gift being forgiveness, right? Because forgiveness gives everything else. Forgiveness brings atonement. Forgiveness, forgiveness brings um, uh, uh, a union back with God. The removal of our sins from us makes us worthy to be in God's presence again. So forgiveness is it. And if we're rejecting the gift of forgiveness, then forgiveness cannot come. It's really as simple as that. It's like if you offered someone a gift and they steadfastly refused to take it from you, and when you left it next to them, they walked away from it. Well, how can you give them that gift if they continue to reject the gift? Luther put it this way. Jesus calls the sin against the Holy Spirit a mortal sin. All of this is tantamount to saying, whoever despairs in his sin or relies on good works sins against the Holy Spirit and against grace. Of course, we should intercede for such people and pray that they may be freed from that sin and be converted. But it is impossible that God be gracious to them so long as they are given to that sin. It is impossible that God's grace be of greater effect in their hearts than that sin. That's a powerful statement. Let me read that again. It is impossible that God's grace be of greater effect in their hearts than that sin, as is true of other sins. That is an intolerable sin. All other sins which let grace triumph and reign are forgivable. So when we sin in faith, and we, and we do all the time, we also have the, the Spirit-given gift of forgiveness that comes through um, our repentance, which is something that we can only have because of faith in Christ and the power of the Spirit working within us to make us truly sorry for our sins and desire to change our lives. Without that, or I should say more correctly, with a rejection of that, because while we are not free to receive the gift of faith or to choose, as a lot of our brothers and sisters use, we cannot choose the faith. God gives that to us freely, but we can in our sin choose to refuse it. That is blaspheming the Spirit. That is the unforgivable sin because we are rejecting the gift of faith in Jesus Christ. So my encouraging and comforting word for all of us here today, those of us who are trusting in Christ alone for our salvation, we're free from any worry or concern about that unpardonable sin. We already have the grace that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. And we hold firmly to that faith, just as God holds firmly to each one of us, as he promises. And we pray for those who actively reject the gift of grace through Jesus Christ. Because as long as they continue to refuse it, there's no way that God can enter in and give them that gift of grace and salvation in Jesus Christ. Well, let's say a prayer. We'll pray for those people especially. And then we will pray uh, Luther's morning prayer as we close. Where is the prayer? Oh, it's a long writing. That's why. Here it is. So let's pray together. Almighty and eternal God, your son Jesus triumphed over the princes of demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are living in the sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit, of rejecting the grace that you give through him. Um, and Lord, um, we pray that you would soften their hearts, that the world, that the people you send to them would cause them to stop resisting, to stop relying on their own good works, to stop refusing that gift of salvation that you give in Jesus Christ, so that the Holy Spirit may enter in and work saving faith in their hearts. 
We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let's finish with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Have a glorious day in the Lord and I'll see you tonight at 845.